Welcome to Code Rush, Feature of the Week. So Mark, what have we got this week? This week, Rory, I'm going to show you the Code Rush training window. Excellent, excellent. Okay. So you're going to be able to learn more about how to use Code Rush. I also, That's fantastic. I know we've got loads of good features, so it'd be great to know a bit more about them. Yes, and, I, and in case you don't know where to find it, you can just come up here and type in training. And uh, notice that, uh, that we can find here, not only most recently used, because I did this just a moment ago, Sure. But we also have, uh, it find, it, Visual Studio finds it under the menus. It sees that uh, in the Code Rush menu under Windows, there's training. So we can just click that like that. It'll bring up the Code Rush training window. Uh, I'll show you how to get it through the regular menus. Just Code Rush, Windows, training, right there. There it is right okay. there. Okay, nice and logical, yep. good. Okay, and uh, this is just the training window. It says move the carrot through the source code to see context-sensitive tips, available templates, and shortcuts. I'm going to dock this uh, over to the side over here. And uh, we'll shrink okay. this down so we see a little bit less of that. And we'll start moving the car carrot through the code. And now you can see All over right. here immediately. So this is, this is not documentation per se. This is, this is actually going to react to what you're doing. Right. You context sensitive yeah. documentation almost. Exactly. That's exactly how I would put it. It's context sensitive documentation. Depending on where I am, as I move through the code, you'll see it update. For example, if I select this, uh, there might be selection kinds of options that I can choose there that are valid, like selection sure. increase and decrease. So I can uh, do that, selection increase, selection decrease, and you can see things change depending on what is happening out in the code. Uh, if I come in here, notice I'm inside a class, it suggests, hey, if you want to create a method, use the letter M. So I could type in the letter right. M and, uh, and then just pause for a moment, and we should see it update for different uh, kinds of suggestions on what I can do with that M. Sure, so we've had lots of videos in the past about different kinds of templates, and we've, we've gone over many starting points, and we've explained about the, the mnemonic system wherein a type can be expressed as a sort of a second uh, parameter of sorts, but of course, it's potentially still a fair amount to remember. This gives you not just the starting point, but now you've, you've typed one character in, and here are all the other options you can now take from here. It's sort of stripped away the ones that are less relevant for the moment. Right, exactly. Also notice over here, I'm just going to make this a little wider so we can see everything in the view here. Notice that we're not showing you everything. Um, notice over here you see plus 16 more, plus 9 more, plus 10 more. So there are a huge number of templates that are available. We do that so it'll be easy to write just about any line of code that you need to write. Um, but, uh, but because there's so many, we can't show them all here either. So we, we start out with, so we say system.md gives me system.double plus 13 more. So if I just type in the D now, uh, and I wait sure. for the update over here, we can now see some of the different options we have. We can create, for example, a dictionary with other options beyond it. We can create, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, if it's a zero, I'm pretty sure that gives me a nullable double right there. Yep. Uh, if it's an eight, it gives me a system dot date time, right? And so yeah. we can uh, we can keep going out here and keep 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 entering letters and looking at seeing what's out here. So if I want to say, well, yeah, D eight is date time, I can type in M D eight, and then now at that point, if you notice, by the way, up here it tells me what the expansion is. It tells me it's matching the M type template, which is the letter M followed yep. by a type shortcut. And it's going to look like this, date, time, method, name. So that's the prediction as if you were to finish off and press space or in some cases tab right now without expanding with any further characters? Yes, right here. See, it says sp press space to expand this template. Okay. That's because my template expansion key is the space. Sure. And if your template expansion key is the tab, that should say press tab to expand this template. Fair enough. Uh, and so, yeah, so if I type in space right here, that's what I get. That's exactly what you saw before. That's fantastic. Yeah, and so, then, so this is I mean, this is in place help focused on what you are currently doing. Exactly. Notice when I'm inside a method, I get a whole nother set of things that I can do. I can still create methods inside of my method. Um, those are local functions, and that's new in uh, I think C sharp seven, if I'm recalling correctly. But that's a great example of how Code Rush is watching the capabilities of what you're doing. So, for example, a lot of people maybe didn't see that that feature existed, and now. What they'd have now is they'd, they'd look at the code rush training and they go, hang on, how is it possible to make a, a method inside a method? That doesn't make any sense. But they could use this feature and then see that the compiler, the, the IntelliSense and all the rest of it is working around that. So, so actually introducing new features of the language in this case. 
Right, Rory, in, in cases like this, actually revealing new features of the language. Cool stuff. The other thing that's cool is, as I mentioned before, is as we move around, it changes. So now that we're inside our new method that we just created, uh, and I've got, I think, my instance to the clipboard, I just copied that to the clipboard, notice we have some if-else block templates down here, including if not assigned, then return, INR. So I could just come in here and type in INR, and it takes what's on the clipboard, and it's going to return. And because it return, this is a function that returns a date time, it's suggesting, Coderish intelligently suggests a default value to return. Also nice. kind of cool. And it's something that if you never had the training window up and you didn't go through uh, any of the, uh, the online training or didn't look at the, uh, uh, at the templates, you might never know about that. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good because CodeRush has a, a way of, um, we, we kind of build the templates to be, I have this idea for what I do. I'd like to make a new variable of type date. So you go VD8 hit space. There's a good cognitive jump there. It's, it's nice, simplistic, what I want, what would CodeRush likely want to do in order to help me do this, and that's fine. But the training window turns it around and actually prompts you and inspires you with a list of things that could be done. You don't yeah. necessarily have to have thought of them in advance. And that can inspire new behaviors, new ways of doing things, and actually teach you the code rush shortcuts as we're going. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so that's one. I'm going I'm to pick one from each of these and just kind of go through the sample of these. So that's an if-else sure. block right there. Uh, try blocks, TF for try finally, TC for try catch, TCF for try catch finally. So if I want to try catch finally, it's just TCF like that. And it gives me that bit right there. So very, very cool, right? Let's pick another one. Let's go down in here. We'll look at another one inside the fun inside the method here. Um, for the uh, flow blocks, we've got four loops starting with FR. So I can type in FR and uh, and then look at this. C for a counter, IN for index, J for the and then single letter variables, J, K, X, Y, and Z. Uh, so I can type in, for example, FRX to have an iterator using uh, uh, X as my value, and then I can type in FRY to get an iterator uh, that goes with the variable Y. And so now I've got my X, Y coordinates very quickly. Very right? nice. Let's keep scrolling down. Let's pick one from the setting values right here. Um, I'm going to just grab this first one, SSE, set to string.empty. Well, first let me create a, a new string variable uh, called uh, message, like that. Uh, let's copy that to the clipboard. Um, let's get, let's just not initialize it, but down here I'm going to come down and use that SSE, set for string empty, like that. And it takes what's yeah. on the clipboard and just sets it equal to string.empty. Okay, uh, returning values, look, RSE for return string.empty, right? I could come in here, RSE like that. Uh, that's not going to be the one I picked, though. That's not fair. I'm going to pick, uh, what do we got here that's fun? Uh, well, we've got some R. Yeah, the R0 is good. RN is very useful. So RN like that for return null, right? Yeah. Use that all the time. Uh, what else do we have down here? Statements, uh, V for variables, N for new instance, C for typecasts, uh, U for using statements. We'll pick U for a using statement. So I'll type in U like this. And I'm just going to hold for a second. And, uh, and then we have a, a couple other options in, in terms of what we can do right here. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to, uh, let's actually scroll up a minute. If we just expand this, we're going to get here, just plain old that. And that's kind of what we want, right? You're using an yeah. expression, whatever that's going to be. OK, so that is a little bit of that. I want to go outside the function. I'm going to just play around just a little bit more. Notice here I can create members, so P for properties. We've done a video on that. Yep. We have not done a video on R for read-only properties, and we haven't done one on, on W for write-only properties. But once you've learned P and M, all you have to know is R for read-only and W for write-only, and you can have yeah, they're access. very logical extensions. Yeah, access to tens of thousands more templates for writing code uh, to create very, very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. CC constructor create. I'm going to save that for another Feature of the Week video. We're going to look at that later. I'm going to focus instead on Q for constants. So Q for constants, do that, and then uh, just follow it up with the type that I want to do. Let's type in G for a GUID. So we'll create QG for a GUID constant like that. There it is. I just hit enter. Maybe I should have mm -hmm. called it my GUID. Let's do it again. It's so easy to type all that in, just QG, <laughs> right? Type in my GUID, hit enter, and then now I can initialize it, paste in a GUID, or just initialize it to GUID.empty, and then hit enter to get outside like that. So. That's it. Uh, we can, you can continue to kind of play around with that. Oh, B for block. 
that's also awesome. Sometimes I'm like uh, something like this. I might be in here if, and uh, then I might want to say something like uh, if the message is null, then uh, I might want to come down and, uh, and then I might want to say something like uh, uh, SSE. We saw that already, but then maybe I want to add some other code or, or maybe I know I want to add other code before this. I want more than one line of code. I just type in B and the space bar it gives me those braces right there. And I know actually in then, that particular case, Mark, the block was intelligently placed on the next line according to your coding standards that you're currently implementing right now. Um, it's, exactly. You know, it, was, it was really quite quick that it happened, but, but if you are underneath on line 31, it expands there. If you're not, it still expands there because that's the way you've said you like your code. Right, and if your coding standards are the opposite and you expand down here, it'll actually move it up to here. Like that. Very nice. So it's, yeah, it's Those really, are the little things that we don't want to have to worry about. Yeah, it's very cool. Right? Cognitive load on what it should be on, solving problems. Yeah, and so that's that's a little bit uh, about the Coder's training window. You can see features grouped by category down below, and you can see templates up at the top. Again, you get to it just by Code Rush, Windows, and bring up training. Fantastic, Mark. Well, that is, a, as you say, a great resource there to help us access the even greater resources that Code Rush has to offer already, but making them more, more cognizant, more in your face, more sort of available to you. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. We'll see you next week on Code Rush Feature of the Week. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.